Hello guys and welcome to a new Broken Arrow video today by me Vulcan. In this one I wanted to take a deep dive into the Russian units available in the Broken Arrow public demo that came out as part of Steam Nextfest. Uh, what I'm going to do is go through each of the categories and have a look at the units and what they can be customized with. I haven't gone through all of the units myself so this will be a little bit of a discovery for me as well. Let's start off with the BRDM 2M. So this is a standard recon car by default with a heavy machine gun and a light machine gun. This heavy machine gun is more than capable of getting through light armor. So you can use it for that. Its optics are actually quite limited uh, considering it is a recon car. It does come with its own smoke and it is amphibious. So that is something to consider. On the right hand side here, I'll just quickly go over this. The top four numbers are your kinetic armor. The bottom four numbers are your heat armor, as you can see there. And then you have the smoke icon and any other icons of extra stuff you can get on the unit. Then you have the health of the unit, the speed of the unit, the optics of the unit, and how stealthy the unit is, the weight of the unit, which is useful for if you want to pick up the unit with another unit, and then obviously whether or not it's amphibious in this case. Uh, underneath we have some other stats here but I'll let you guys pause and read those if you want to take a look. I'm not going to go into this too much um, but we will. I will point out like the caliber of an auto cannon or something like that. So let's jump into the weapon packages for the BRDM, see what we can get. First of all it looks like we can get a HMG and a grenade launcher, that's cool. The cord HMG, the turret does in fact change there as you can see which is very very nice and that or that uh, grenade launcher would definitely make this a much more effective against infantry. You can also get an auto cannon, the KPVB auto cannon, which is a 23 mm auto cannon, so will make it more effective against enemy armor. And you still have that grenade launcher, which is cool. And then there's also the big cast mod module, which gives you extra optics by the looks of things. Yeah, the optics changed. So 500 to 750, so definitely more of a recon unit if you have that enabled, uh, which is probably the best use for this kind of vehicle anyway. It does cost you an extra 20 points though. Uh, you can see that each of the different modules here on the left do cost extra points. So the Cord HMG plus AGS is extra 5 points. Uh, the KBVT by default is an extra 10 points. That's based on the base vehicle itself. Uh, then we have the armor packages. This has upgraded armor apparently armored chassis oh there we go so you can get an armored chassis for this which increases all of its resistances uh well basically doubles the armor uh so that's pretty nice for 10 points that seems like a good trade although it loses its amphibious capability because it's probably too heavy <laughs> fair enough fair enough all right let's move on to the brdm3 the brdm3 uh, is a very fast vehicle with its eight wheels uh, it does have that same hundred speed as the brdm and it still has the 12 health but it does come with default higher optics which is interesting much heavier though uh, let's have a look at the weapon packages so by default it has a 30 mil cannon and a machine gun the 30 mil cannon has both ap and he rounds uh, then it has an upgrade of the turret by the looks of things it doesn't change the weapon what this does is in is decrease the aim time of the auto cannon and increase the optics so it can see better and aim faster which is actually pretty deadly a deadly combination for an extra 20 points and then we have the PRP-5 turret which changes the whole thing to what looks like an exceptional optics monster <laughs> <laughs> the 1200 optics but takes away its auto cannon so this is like extreme recon right here look at that very cool i like the way it completely changes the model that's awesome okay let's have a look at the armor so it can be up armored uh, to protect itself from heat so there we go now, I'm not sure if actually I got this right with the numbers here. I think the orange numbers are the heat protection then, and then the white numbers are kinetic protection. Anyway, you can see that it definitely increases the numbers here quite substantially in terms of the armor. 
uh, definitely making it more resistant to those heat projectiles. Let's move on to the first of the drones. We have the four post, which is a recon drone. It has 950 optics. I think by default it comes with the cornets. Yeah, I've already had a look at this before. Um, which are just your simple HGMs. They have a range of up to 2,700 meters and will help you take out tanks if you need to. 950 optics though, pretty nice. So you might just want to use this for a recon. And there's the Corsair. This thing, again, comes with uh, different missiles. This is another one I've looked at. You can, by default, bring it empty with the 950 optics. Uh, then it has the Conker's HGMs available. And there's also the Attacker HGMs available as well. So one of them having slightly more range and damage, that being the Attacker. There's also optics packages on this. So you can get advanced optics, which takes it up to 1,200 on the optics side of thing. Very cool. All right, let's have a look at the Orion drone. It's a much bigger drone. This has inner pylons, outer pylons, and an optics package you can change. So for the outer pylons, we can use corner H gems. We can use the Vicar AT gem. And there's also the KAB-50, which is classed as a low drag bomb with an effective range of 10,500 meters. That's pretty incredible. So you can fire that from miles away, quite literally. Uh, outer pylons can have the same as the inner pylons. It just increases the price the more stuff you put on it. So you can have a mix maybe as well, which is kind of cool. So you can have two of those and two of those. You can switch it up. Very nice. And then optics, you've got good optics and then you've got very good optics. So it goes 750 to 950. But considering you're probably going to use this drone most of the time, probably for the long range KAB 50s, you'll likely already have sight on what you want to fire out on the ground. But a very, very interesting unit. Cool. All right, let's move on to the, oh gosh, wish me luck. Pogranichniki. Pogranichniki. Close enough. Looks like uh, infantry that use doggos. Nice. <laughs> Recon unit with 950 optics. You get three men in the squad. And they have seven armor. I'm not entirely sure what that means. I guess it's like a general resistance to enemy light arms fire. See, they've got their speed there, and they aren't very heavy compared to vehicles. <laughs> Three men squad, 375 kilos. There you go. Right, AK 47s. They got a GP 25, which means they do get a underslung grenade launcher. And then they also have the RPK-74. So just a cheap recon squad. And there is the PRP-4A Argus. This thing is basically like a BRM recon. Uh, it comes with reasonable armor, uh, one machine gun, but 1,200 optics. So it's basically there for its optics. And it does have laser designation as well by the looks of things. So handy in that regard. You can give it more armor to make it more resistant to those heat projectiles. Then we have the Resvetka squad. Looks like it's five man squad. Four have AKs with grenade launcher on one of them. And then they have the RPG-26. Only two rockets there and an SVD. Of course, all of these numbers are subject to change. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but I just thought I would say um, this SVD does have an effective range of 900 meters. The AK-47 or 74, sorry, has 600 meter effective range. Don't think there's anything too crazy going on here. Again, same optics as before, just more men. And there's the Sarmat 2. Looks like a little recon Jeep. 
comes by default with the Chord HMG. It has 600 optics. Very, very fast. Forward speed 130. And it can be equipped with a grenade launcher, the AGS-30, if you want to do. It's pretty cool. Though that machine gun is pretty mean. Let's move on to the Spetsnaz. The classic Special Forces recon unit. They get AK-74 SSOs. Two of them have grenade launchers. So five AK-74s, two with grenade launchers. Then they have the RPG-30. They get three of those. And then they have the SVDS, uh, which is, I guess, like, is that a silenced version of the SVD or is it just an upgraded version? Probably just an upgraded version. Um, anyway, 1,050 meter range on that compared to the SVD here, which only has 900 meters. So, yeah, I think that's just like a more modern variant of the SVD. Uh, but these RPGs, they have two shots each. So technically you have six rockets in those. And then this one, they also get two shots each. So yeah, you have two RPGs and they have two shots each. So that's cool. Uh, let's move on to the VDV Razvodka. So first of all, we have the AK-74 RMO. This is just your standard rifle, 600 meter range. The two of them have grenade launchers. Then they have RPGs, so they've got one RPG but six shots, and they've got one of those upgraded SVDs, and that has 950 optics. So less health, less men. It looks like each man has four health. I don't know if that changes, but the armor so far has stayed the same as well between all of these. I don't know if that's just a standard for all of the infantry. Anyway, that's all of the recon units looked at. So let's move on to the infantry tab. In the infantry tab, we have, first of all, some Desan Niki. This is a 14-man squad. They have 12 AK-74 RMOs, four of which have grenade launchers. They get two RPG uh, 7D3s with six shots per, so they get 12 shots of 80 total. And they have two PKPMs, which have an effective range of 675 meter range, so slightly longer than their uh, assault rifle. So these are yeah, looking pretty meaty. And we have the Moskaya Pokota. These guys are seven man squad. I'm just looking to see if like the armor changes at all between these, but it doesn't look like it does at the moment. Um, these guys get five AK-74 RMOs, uh, two of which have uh, grenade launchers, and then they also have the three RPG-27s with two shots each. So six shots total for AT, and then they've got the RPK-74M, two of those. Uh, these match the same range as their AK-74s, which I think, generally speaking, would probably be more useful. Uh, what's the range on the GP? So the grenade launcher also has a 600 meter range. I feel like uh, in like game, the Desaniki having a machine gun that's longer range than their assault rifle will get them caught out sometimes. Anyway, moving on, we have the Montestrauki. And the Montestrauki have uh, six AK-74Ms, two of which have grenade launchers. They have one RPG, which has six shots, and the PKP machine gun there. So it doesn't look like the stats change too much between the infantry at the moment. I think the majority of the changes uh, will be based on what vehicles they can come in uh, at the moment. There's also the Oknemachiki. These guys are a four-man squad. They get four AK-74s, and they also get the RPOA, which fires thermobaric uh, rockets. So this is like an anti-infantry rocket, and uh, they get four shots by the looks of it. So it looks like a fire and forget if they get four shots because every single man has one. Uh, so that's cool. Then we have the PZRK Igla. I like how Igla squads in this game have two Iglas per squad. I, I like that a lot, actually. Um, five men with the AK-74, two Igla ends. 
Uh, those eaglet ends have a effective range of 1500 meters in game i'm not gonna lie the range on these um aa pieces really caught me out <laughs> they shot down my helicopters quite a lot and it looks like the eaglet has the same range of the verb i just wanted to check then we have the reservisti or reservisti i don't know how you're supposed to say that um Five AK-74s, GP-25, RPG-7 with the six rockets and PKM there. So it's like reserve squad. I don't know if there's like any hidden stats and stuff at the moment, but there isn't really much to distinguish these units. Maybe it's the time between burst changes and stuff like that, if it's like a more elite unit. As you can see here, the motor stroke time between bursts is four, whereas like the time between bursts for these guys is uh, only 2.5 max to 3.25 max. So they fire slightly faster because they have a better rifle. Anyway, moving on, we have the VDV. Uh, these are the machine gun squad VDV. I think that's what the DSH stands for, is that they come with a machine gun. Not, not entirely sure. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. Um, <laughs> they get four AK-74 RMOs. Uh, they get one grenade launcher on those. Uh, one RPG-73 with the six rockets and the machine gun. And then finally, we have the VDV Verba, which comes with the four AK-74 RMOs. They do actually get a grenade launcher on their AA squad and a PKPM. So this is more of like a combat unit because they only have one launcher the Verba, whereas the Igla squad is like more specialized anti-air, this seems to like accompany the VDV in ground assaults uh, with that Verba as well to help with enemy aircraft if needed. And that's your lot for the infantry tab. Let's move on to the vehicle tab. There's quite a lot to go through here, so strap in. Uh, first of all, we have the BMD2, relatively light armored vehicle. Uh, with a 30 mil auto cannon, both AP and HE shells, I assume that's supposed to be, with two machine guns. It does get a machine gun here on the left, as you can see, and then there's one in the turret. So one of them has to be facing forwards with the hull, the other ones can be traversed with the turret. Uh, this has 600 optics, which is actually better than like the BRDM. Um, it can seat five men. So small squads of infantry can fit inside it. It is amphibious and it can be airdropped. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it does have some different weapons. Let's just check this. It can come with a Conquisator gem on top. It can also come with two Cornets as well. That is very nice. Does that change anything else? No, I think it's just the cornets there that get put on the side. These cornets, they have an effective range of 2,700 meters. The conkers, we can't see there, unfortunately. All right, let's move on to the BMD-4. So this is a big, bigger BMD, uh, B BMD, sorry, a bigger BMD. <laughs> with a 100 mil on it uh, you can see here on the right it can fire four eight gems by the looks of it out of its main gun which have a max range of 2800 meters as 600 mils of penetration that's pretty cool and then their standard round has an effective range of 2400 meters nice oh, it also has the 30 mil as well Oh, okay, so it's kind of like a BMP-3 in that it has a main gun next to its autocannon. I didn't see that because of the angle there. Um, so we also have the 30 mil cannon there. That seems very nice. And it can be airdropped again, and it does have the amphibious capability. It also can house five people uh, to carry with it, so that's nice. Uh, its armor package increases its armor slightly, not actually too much. It also technically reduces its top armor. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the BMO-1. 
This is a standard armored vehicle with 30 mil cannon on it. Nothing too crazy here. Relatively low optics. Like if you compare it to the BMD4, this thing has 950 optics. Obviously the BMD4 much more modern than like a BMD2 or the BMO. Uh, so I think the more modern something is in Broken Arrow, generally it has better optics, which makes sense because it's realistic. Um, but that's kind of how they've uh, balanced the optics. There's not like necessarily specific recon units. It's just like role based uh, that you might see in game, like expendable units that you might want to send forwards first kind of thing. Anyway, uh, this does get two sets of smoke, actually. You can see the smoke launches on the side and yeah. Uh, standard sort of support vehicle can carry four men then there's the 9p162 cornet t a vehicle with a cornet missile system on it it does have that classic 2700 meter range uh, it gets two types of missiles here one is used against infantry so it has like a 150 mil heat ground infantry target types that's interesting so that does 19 damage against infantry and then this one's against like armor with the 1200 meter uh or yeah 1200 millimeter uh penetration there interesting actually has quite a lot of armor 105 in the front there so definitely something you're going to be using to deal with those big chunky tanks then there's the classic bmp2 which comes with that uh, 30 mil cannon and we get to see the conkers here with the 2700 meter effective range uh, nothing too crazy about this does have seven seats for infantry and it is amphibious and we got the bmp3 uh, this can come with lots of different weapon packages by the looks of it we got the basic turret which has the 100 mil gun plus the 30 mil cannon on the side it has the Arkan um, HGM that it can fire out of its main gun. So 2,800 meters on the Arkan and then 200, 400 meters range on its main gun. It does have three machine guns. It gets one on the left there, one on the right, one in the turret, I think. Yeah, on the right side. Um, so a pretty beastly unit for taking on infantry, especially considering it is very well armored as well. 105 uh, millimeters of armor on the front there. So, yeah, very nice. Uh, you can get the BMP 3M turret, which I guess is the upgrade to it. Gets increased optics and it gets a upgraded H gem. Well, it looks like that H gem has slightly more penetration. There you go. Then there's the Epoca module, which has a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> it's got the LSHO, <laughs> which is that a 57 mil cannon. Okay, with AF, APF, SDS. 80 to 160 mil kinetic penetration and it's also got he rounds it must fire relatively slowly if it's only got 90 rounds and then it's got the three machine guns that it had before so it's got the machine gun on the right side there and then the two in the hull it's got the cornet missiles it gets four of them two on each side and it also has the bullet system which is i guess this back here that has 900 millimeter penetration on it and it has 950 optics it can carry seven seven men it is amphibious this thing is just an absolute monster <laughs> that's crazy the latest and greatest bmp3 m tech okay all right let's move on uh we've got the bmp 97 cord um this is just a standard sort of motorized vehicle with armor on it the machine gun on top by the looks of things <laughs> that's gonna be my <laughs> assessment of it with uh, seven seats for carrying infantry 
It can add an auto cannon, a 30 mil auto cannon of all things on top. Crikey, that makes it look like it's going to flip backwards. And it can also have the Spitzer module, which is a another 30 mil. It gets increased optics, and it comes with a grenade launcher as well. <laughs> that looks wild, absolutely wild. Okay, interesting. I can't help but feel that this should increase the weight <laughs> of such a vehicle. That's that's crazy. All right, let's have a look at the Conkers. So this is a BRDM with the Conkers on it. And a Conkers HGM. You can also put the corner HGMs on it. So there you go. Extra bit of cost there. You can get a better HGM. I'm not going to go through these too much. We'll, we'll, we'll carry on a little bit faster. Um, BTO. Oh, this is like an MTLB, isn't it? With... Uh, RPO thermobaric rockets on it. Okay. Effective range of 600 meters is not very far. But basically this is what the infantry were firing, but it's put on a armored vehicle. It is amphibious. It can carry eight men. And it can be given more armor. Which it uses to resist heat rounds. Okay. Then we have the BTR-80, bit of a classic here, comes with the KPVT and the PKT by default, uh, can carry seven men, has the BTR-82A adaptation which gives it the 30 mil, and there's also the BTR-82AT which gives it the 30 mil cannon with conkers on the sides. Okay. This thing has much better optics, mainly because of this module on top, I would presume. Interesting. I'm not familiar with like the latest tech really so much that's coming out of Russia, so some of these are kind of catching me by surprise. And we have the BTRD, as uh, another classic. Um, it comes with two PKTs by default, which fire out the front. Uh, then we've got the ability to drop it from the air and amphibious. It carries 10 men, um, so that's pretty useful. In terms of weapons, it can use the... Was that the Cord HMG and AG-17, but it says NSV. Does that mean it has like, I don't know, whenever I see N in the name, I, see, I, think, I assume like night vision. But I um, don't think it changes too much. It just kind of removes the machine guns from the top and puts the machine gun on top and with a grenade launcher. And then there's the BTR 82 AT variant. I think that's maybe there by mistake, so we'll ignore that. Let's move on to the BTR MDM. Oh, look at that big chonker. Comes with the two PKTs one's on top, one's in the hole. Uh, it's got 14 spaces for infantry. It is amphibious. It can be airdropped. And it can add additional weapons. So we can add an ZU-23-2 on top. <laughs> Would you look at that? <laughs> Let's just put a two-man team on top with a 23 mil cannon. Why not? This thing can fire 1,350 meters. And it is effective against, obviously, ground targets and air targets. There is also the ZU-23-2M variant. Doesn't look like too much changes. It looks like it has a bit more range. Yeah, it has a bit more range. Probably because of optics mounted on the thing. There's also the ZU-23-2M variant with the Igla S. That's cool. Uh, so you get the Iglas mounted on top as well. It's a relatively lightly armoured hull, but probably better than maybe some other choices that we'll see later on. And there's the BTRD, BTRRD robot. Which comes with the Conkers. 
A light armoured vehicle that is amphibious can be airdropped with an HGM on it. Gives you eight Conkers missiles. There's the BTR ZD, which by default has only the two machine guns, but I'm pretty sure it's meant to have better equipment on it. It's yeah, it's basically made to mount this ZU23S system that we just had a look at. It's got a very similar package. I, I assume the reason that this is like this is so that you can set up this one as normal. Ah, oh, okay, so never mind. I was getting this confused for this. Uh, so yeah, you can have this BTR MDM with the system on top, or you can have a BTR with the system on top. Interesting. Okay. Then there's the Gaz Tiger. Uh, this thing has a PKP. Uh, it is very fast. It has seven seats, so super fast infantry transport. Can come with a bunch of different weapons, blimey. We've got the 30mm grenade launcher here. There is the HMG. We've got the Cord HMG. That Cord HMG has 1,350 meter range because of its optics. I mean, even that standard Cord HMG has 1,200 meters. So does the grenade launcher. Uh, then there's the auto cannon. Okay, <laughs> 23 mil auto cannon with 1,500 meter range. That's uh, pretty cool, actually. But on such a fast vehicle, I feel like it's going to be super powerful. There's also an up armored variant. Pretty much doubles, even triples almost the armor on the front. But I can't imagine that little bit extra armor is going to be that useful. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway, moving down, we have the Cornet D1, which is just another classic mechanized vehicle, armored vehicle with the Cornet system on top, 2,700 meters. You can have a look at this yourself on the right hand side. Again, it's amphibious, it can be airdropped. Uh, weapon packages, it can bring. The Cornet M, which looks to be an upgraded variant of the Cornet with extra penetration. It can reload three times, whereas this just has them all mounted already and it can fire eight and then has to be uh, manually resupplied elsewhere. And then we have the MTLBVM, the MTLB uh, with the machine gun on it, the cord. HMG is your standard here. Weapon packages, you can have the KPVT on the back there. Gives it a little turret. It's cool. Uh, you can also put the auto cannon on it. Okay, 30mm auto cannon, why not? And you can also do the 2A42 variant with <laughs> the grenade launcher. Okay. So that is. I guess aiming faster again than the standard one. Kind of hard to see because it changes it every time. But yeah, anyway, cooler HGM or cooler auto cannon, sorry, with a grenade launcher rather than just an auto cannon. In terms of armor, you can put the skirts on it to get the heat protection. <laughs> that looks like a beast. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Moving on, we have the MTLB, which can use the ZU23 system. There's also another system, the GSH30K, which is a twin 30 cal, or 30 mil, sorry, uh, with an Igla N. Cool. And that, I assume, can also have skirts. Yep. Interesting. And we have the Narpanik. These things were like really deadly in the campaign or like in the demo mission that we played. Um, I, my infantry was getting wrecked by these and I always wondered what, what was on them. But if it's just like a standard cord HMG that was firing at me from range with the 1,200 meters, like they, these are deadly. Like these MGs are actually deadly in game. 
If your infantry get caught out in the open, they die very quickly. Uh, but this can also have an auto cannon on it. <laughs> a 30 mil auto cannon on the top of that little car with the PKT. Wow. This better have been designed for serious recoil reduction. You can just see these things like flip when they <laughs> fire these guns. Obviously not, but like <laughs> I'm being over dramatic. <laughs> it just looks so dumb. Uh, again, I really see potential in Broken Arrow for these like super fast, highly powerful weapons. Like these little cars that are zipping around with super speed and have a 30 mil on them. Like they can be super useful. And we have the Sprut SD. I do not know what this is one bit, but it looks like a mechanized vehicle with a big old cannon on it. The 2A75. It can fire 125mm APF SDS. Some nice penetration there. It can also fire HE at 2400 meters range. And it can also fire Eight of gems, 2,800 meter range with 750 millimeters penetration. So actually some serious firepower, but on a relatively lightly armored hull. It can be amphibious and it is, or sorry, it is amphibious and it can be airdropped, but it doesn't have much in the way of optics. Next up, we have the big boy tanks. And we got the first of all, the biggest of the big, the T-14 Armata. Uh, so this has a 125 mil gun, uh, which has 2,400 meter range. But look at that penetration: 585 to 1,170 millimeters of kinetic penetration. That is ridiculous. Uh, then we have some nice HE, and we also have the Sokol missile that it can fire at 2,850 meter range. It comes with the PKT and the Cord HMG on top. But I'm going to assume that the PKT is in the turret, yeah, and the cord HMG is up there. It does have 950 optics, so it can spot for itself. Its actual armor protection is very nice. It gets some serious heat protection, 1,510 millimeters of heat protection. That's quite significant. It also has this APS. I'm not sure what that means. But I assume it's active protection system, if I were to guess. And so it will be able to defend itself against incoming missiles and stuff like that, is what I would assume. Um, and then it also has two sets of smoke. So that's cool. Very nice indeed. Um, anything else to see here? I just want to double check because this is one of the awesome units in this tab. We have a classic T-72B. Uh, has the 125 millimeter gun with only 320 to 640 kinetic penetration. You can see how different that is. And then the HE rounds. And then it also can fire the 9M 119A to GM, um, which has 2700 meter range. So can give yourself a little bit of range advantage over uh, those pesky US tanks. Um, 770 millimeters of frontal heat armor and 570 millimeters towards kinetic. Um, so yeah, orange numbers are heat. The white is kinetic. Moving on, we have the B3. Looks like the armor gets increased quite substantially between the two. And it also gets an upgraded gun by the looks of it. So it gets 440 to 880 millimeters of kinetic penetration. It has the standard HG and it can also fire the Invar uh, HGM. So this one has 750 meters or millimeters of penetration. This one is 750 millimeter heat. Is that? That would also be heat, I assume. Yeah, okay. Um, I didn't actually have a look at the different packages. The Armata didn't have any. Um, also, did I miss out on the NARP? No, the Sprut. It says modernization. I don't know what the SDM means. Oh, it increases the optics. It puts all the optics on top. Okay, so just so you didn't miss that. Sorry, almost. Um, and the T-72B 
we can get the BA, which doesn't change the gun, but gives it the Invar missiles. And then there's a T-72B1 that doesn't have missiles, but it, but has heat rounds. Interesting. And then armor, we got the Concat 1 and the Concat 5. That increases the armor quite substantially to the same as the B3 almost. Um, well, the, the stock B3 actually, it has the same armor. And it can also have an improved engine, which increases its speed. Ooh, that's cool. All right, the T-72B3, we already went through its weapons, but it's defense package. Ah, so it's got the B3M, which increases its kinetic or its heat protection. There's the B3M OBR 16, which improves it even more. You see these panels on the side. Then there's the active protection system added. So this is the T72B3M with Arena APS, and then there's you can get the OBR16 with the Arena OBS. Or APS, sorry. Okay, so you can get like the maximum heat protection plus the uh, area protection. Cool. Uh, then we have the upgraded engine again available. Very nice. Let's move on to the T80BV. T80BV by default does not have better armor than T72. But it does have different unit variants available. It has a 125mm gun with 365mm to 735mm or 730mm of kinetic penetration. PKT has its big machine gun on top. Let's have a look at the variants. So does this change the gun at all? Okay, yeah, the gun does change, so we get some extra penetration. And we also get access to the Invar HGM. It also increases in armor, gets more optics, gets more health, goes faster. Then we have the BVM 2018 variant, which has even more heat protection, but the armament stays the same. And then we have the 2018 plus variant, which gets even more side heat protection. And again, the gun stays the same. Crikey, that's a, a big upgrade. <laughs> like, that's very nice. Finally, we have the Typhoon K. And the Typhoon K is a truck which can carry 14 people. Quite a lot. It goes very fast. And it has a machine gun on top. It's quite well armoured for a truck. It can be mounted with a 23mm auto cannon to protect your troops as they unload. Cool. And there you go. That's your vehicle tab. And we have the support tab. Crikey, we still got lots to go. The Mister is going to be the first. 152mm artillery. It has a range of 4,500 meters. 15.5 damage. It has also got guided Krasnopol munitions which have the same range but as I mentioned are guided so that's pretty cool and then you also have smoke available it does have multiple weapon packages you've got the M1 and you've got the M2 and the M2 it looks like the reload time is faster on the M2 variant and it also has the Krasnopol D, which has a longer range than the Krasnopol M. 
I think that's the main difference there. So, sorry if I'm missing anything. And then we have the Nona SVK. This can be up armored, but its base weapon is the 120 mil mortar rounds that it can fire out of this tube. And it also has smoke available. Maximum range of 3,600 meters. It is an amphibious vehicle. It's relatively quick. And it does have the PKT to defend itself. Then we have the Ekatsaya. Another 152mm artillery piece with 4,200 meter range. So compared to the Mister, it is slightly shorter on the range, 300 meters shorter. It does have smoke rounds. And its weapon package, you can get the M2 which has a faster reload time. So it goes from 8 to 10 seconds to 7 to 9 seconds. Cool. Then we have the 2S4 Tolpan. This is a massive 240mm mortar round that it can fire. It gets 20 of these rounds. 22 damage on that. And that's going to hurt if it hits. Very, very cool. All right, then we have the 2S41 Drock. It's an armored car with an 82mm mortar on it. Which has 3,000 meter range, 12 smoke rounds. So a nice fast mortar that you can remove around. And we have the classic Grad Launcher, 122mm HE rockets that this can fire at a range of 15,000 meters. Crikey. There you go. Then we have the Yorogun. This thing is 220 millimeter HE. And it can have an effective range of 30,000 meters. Wow. Okay. The maps are going to have to get pretty big then. <laughs> uh, and it can change its weapon package as well. So you can get 220 mil rockets, or you can get 12 300 millimeter rockets. It goes from 22 to 30 damage. The dispersion does increase. The suppressive power also increases. That's pretty cool. I like how you can have different types of rockets on this. Nice. Okay, moving on. We have the Kama. This has 300 millimeter HE rockets. Again, again can fire 30,000 meters. And it has a fast reload system. So reload time goes from 30 to 15 seconds. Wow, okay. So I assume with your supply nearby, that's what it means, or, or maybe it's like between salvos, I don't know. It says magazine size is six, so I assume it fires all of them at once and then you have to reload. But there's 12 available here, right? It says six total. Let me just check the, uh, the comma. So this comes with six. Pretty sure this comes with 12. Yeah, so it probably fires 6. No, it says magazine tied 12. Okay, so maybe it just fires 12 and then reloads, but anyway. I assume that's something to do with supply and how long it takes to like reload after it's been resupplied. We do have the smirch. This comes with 12 300 millimeter HEs. Just a big old chunk of missiles. And there's the A222 Bereg. This is the one that we saw in the demo mission. Comes with 130 mil rounds. Effective range of 7,500 meters. It also has an AA projectile that can hit helicopters at 1,950 meter range. Which is pretty awesome. Then there's the Kamaz VDV truck. Which is just like your standard truck, nothing crazy going on here. It can carry 4,000 supply and can be airdropped. 
you got the Kamaz 6560, which can carry 20,000 munitions and 28 men. This can carry 28 men as well, apparently. How can this carry 28 men and this can carry 28 men? <laughs> okay. Um, then we got the Osa AKM. Uh, let me see if I can get the... Sorry, sometimes this bugs out on the right-hand side, so you can't see the weapon system. Um, 1,500 meter range against helicopters and aircraft. It's actually much shorter than I thought it would be. Um, but it does have the radar here. As you can see, I assume this radar icon means that it can be detected by seed munitions. Um, so that's something you'd have to be careful of. It is amphibious. We have the Panzer, which is basically like the Tunguska system that's on the back of a truck. Um, this thing uses a twin 30 mil which again has 1,500 meter range against aircraft. And then it also has the missiles that it can fire at 1,500 meters as well. Okay, cool. Then we have the S350 Vityaz. This also fires AA missiles. At 300 to 1,500 meters. I feel like this will probably get increased in range, surely. <laughs> I'm not, obviously, a lot, again, a lot of this isn't final, so I would assume that some of the ranges here are going to change because that looks like it's the sort of system that's supposed to fire a long way. Um, then we have the TOS 2 to Sochka. This thing has a effective range of 100 to 6,000 meters. This is an MLRS system. The TOS 2 is that? It says 30 millimeter heat rounds. Well, so it's 30 mils of penetration, sorry. Obviously, the TOS I generally perceive to be like the napalm stuff. Anyway, moving on, we have the Euro, which can come with the ZU-23-2M. Can it get all of the different variants? It can. It can get the normal variant. It can get the one with the Igler as well. And then it has the base armor and then the up armored variant. This is a unit that I've obviously looked at before. Cool. All right. Uh, let's move on to the standard Ural. This thing can carry 21 men or 10,000 supply. And then we also have the Barusa. I like the animations on these uh, vehicles. Very like realistic the way the canopy comes up there. Um, 23 mil bod cannon. Very nice for ripping helicopters out of the sky, that's for sure. And there you go. That's the support tab. Let's move on to the Lodge tab, which is nothing there. <laughs> Let's move on to the helicopters. <laughs> we have the KA-29. This has the GSHG, which is in the nose here. And then we've also got some 80 millimeter rockets on the side of it currently. It can have weapons on its hull. So an auto cannon can be added. So on the left side of the aircraft, you can have yourself a 30 mil cannon if you want. That's pretty cool. And then on the inner pylons, we can have the rocket pods that we can see, the 80 mil rockets. Or we can have two of these 23 millimeter gun pods. It looks like they're both twin 23 mils on both sides. That's a lot of bullets you can put down range or cannon rounds, I guess, you can put down range against apparently ground infantry vehicle helicopters and aircraft. Oh, it can actually fire these aircraft if they fly past. That's pretty crazy. Right, and then the outer pylons, they can have more rockets, more 80 mil rockets, or you can have some Cocon Ace gems, which have that 2850 meter range, or some Ataka Ace gems as well. You can actually get some pretty decent H gems on this KA-29. That's cool. Moving on, we have the KA-50. 
Ka50 is a very, very nice aircraft, very nice looking aircraft with the 23mm gun uh, auto cannon, which is on the side here. And then we've also got the rockets as well. In terms of these statistics, we've got forward speed, we've got agility. Okay, so the Ka50 obviously being slightly faster, it has more armor. So that is something. Also, the Ka29 can carry 16 people, so it can be used as a transport as well. So there's that to bear in mind. Um, let's have a look at the inner pylons and outer pylons of the Ka50. So inner pylons can only be rockets, and then outer pylons, we've got the Vicia 80 gems. So two sets of six, which are very powerful long range ATGMs, 2850 meter range with 900 millimeters of heat penetration. Very nice. Maybe we'll get more on the inner pylons there because I kind of find it odd that we have the option if we can't change it. Moving on, we have the Ka-52, the classic Akula. I think the Ka-50 is the Tiger, right? And then this is the Akula. Um, the standard stats for this, let's have a look. We've got the 30 mil, which is on the side, and then it's got two of these 80 mil rocket pods. You can upgrade them to 165 millimeter AP rockets. Is that right? 165 mil AP rockets? They're like kinetic. That's cool. Interesting weapon. You can also take them off entirely. Bit of a typo there. Um, but that's okay. Middle pylons. You can have them empty. You can have the Vicar 8 gem. We've talked about before. The range on that isn't as good. I feel like that's a bit of a mistake on there. It's supposed to be probably 2800. Oh, never mind. I'm clicking on the wrong thing. That's why. And then we got the S13 rockets, which have the. Okay. This is 122 mil heat. I'm, I'm getting really confused with this. The inner pylons. Yeah, okay. So these are 130 mil rockets. Sorry. Not 165 mil rockets. <laughs> They're 130 mil rockets. Which are basically heat rockets. Okay, cool. Right, we got there in the end. Then we have the Igla 5 anti air missile, which is some air to air option, which is cool on the outer pylons if you want it. 1500 meter range. That's cool. Let's move on to the Mi 24K. First of the Heinz. We've got the. Yak B on the front, classic auto cannon on the front, very nice. And then we've got the rockets on the sides here. Cool. I don't know if this class is an auto cannon. I guess it's like uh, more like a mini gun or like a automatic machine gun. I don't know what you class it as, uh, but. On the inner pylons, the only option is the rockets, or you can take the rockets off. And then on the outer pylons, you can have more rockets. That's more of these 80 mil rockets, or you can add the 23 mil gun pods. Cool. Uh, then we have the Mi-24P. This has the twin 30, ca uh, 30 mil, sorry, on the side. And then also has the two 80 mil gun pods by default. Can take those gun or the rocket pods, sorry, off. On the outer pylons, we can have rocket pods. We can have the Cocon 80 gems with the 2850 meter range. And there's also the R60 anti air missiles that you can add, which have 3000 meter range against helicopters and aircraft, which is quite substantial. On the 
very outer pylons, that, sorry, that was the middle pylons, on the outer pylons we can actually have the Cocon ATGM system as well. So we can mix and match all of these different armaments. I really, really like that. You can have rockets, you can have like air-to-air, -air, and you can have um, ATGMs on one aircraft. Obviously it's going to make the aircraft very expensive, and it's going to be an absolute pain for the developers to balance, but it is cool that you can do that. <laughs> then we have the VP variant as well. So I'm just trying to check between the MI24K and the MI24P if there's any difference in the, the main stats. The MI24P can carry five soldiers. And the MI24VP... I'm not sure if the stats are updating properly on this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the MI24K can't carry anyone. The MI24P can carry five people. And then the MI24VP can carry eight people. It has the 23 mil on the front with the 80 mils rockets. So they're all more or less the same. It's just their armament on the front changes. So one has the Yak B, one has the 30 mils, and then one has the 23 mil gun on the front. I'm trying to get it so it lets me see the different stuff. You do it this way. There we go. All right, so we can take the rocket pods off. We can put more rockets on the middle pylon, or we can have some Cocon HGMs. So four of those get added. And then on the outside ones, we can have even more age gems. So we can have a total of like that eight to eight gems. 2,800 meter range with the 750 mil heat penetration. Yeah, seems pretty nice. I think this 23 mil is actually going to be really useful though, because it kind of fire in any direction. Uh, then we have the MI-26. This is a big boy. It is your classic cargo helicopter. I think it could probably load some vehicles in there, which is nice. Get 85 men in it and 20,000 supply. That's nice indeed. Just realized that the MI-24s have less armor than the KA-50 and the KA-52. If that's correct, then I did not realize that was the case in real life. Uh, other than that, we have the MI-28N, the Havoc. This thing has 18 armor. It can carry two people, apparently. I don't know if the seats include the pilots in this case, but because I don't know where else you would sit. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it does have a 30 mil underneath the nose here, which is very, very nice. Uh, which has both those AP and HE rounds. It can fire uh, its 20, well, two pods of 20 80 mil rockets as well. Uh, and inner pilot, uh, pylons can also have the S13 130 mil rockets. And then the outer pylons can have more rockets, 80 mil rockets, S13 rockets. You can put eight attacker eight gems on the outer pylons. You can put Iglas on there as well. And that is attackers and Iglas, sorry. So you've got attackers on one side and Iglas on the other. You get four Igla S missiles. Or you can have entirely Igla S set up. Cool. Very interesting indeed. Alright, then we have the MI8 AMTSH. Dash VN. This is, I guess, a relatively upgraded MI8 um, with better like optics than the standard MI8. Yeah. Um, it comes default with the two rocket pods. You can have the 23 mil gun pods, or you can have it empty. And then on the outer pylons, sorry, we got middle pylons first this time. Okay. And then outer pylons, we got Cocon H gems, Attacker H gems, or Iglas. 
Okay. And then on the inner pylons, there isn't anything yet. Okay. Interesting. So you can definitely give these quite an armament. We have the MI8 MTV-2. Uh, this by default comes with a machine gun. Where is this machine gun? Is it just the one in the nose? Yes, it is. Um, this can be added with rocket pods. It can also be added with the 23 mil gun pods. We've got more rockets as well. So we can go rockets and rockets, rockets and gun pods. That would actually be a pretty, pretty beastly setup for sure. And this can carry 21 men. It can also carry supply. So it could be a very versatile aircraft. But I think what the devs are going to plan to do is like if you plan to bring in like these weapons on these, maybe it like cuts down the amount of men you can bring in, stuff like that. I think I've seen that in other vehicles so far. So that is something also to consider. Finally, we have the MI8. MTV-5 cargo, which is primarily a cargo helicopter. So you get 28 seats with the 4,000 supply. Uh, loadout, you can put weapons on it. Interesting. You can have the two 80mm rocket pods. You can put the two 23mm gun pods. You can put four 80mm rockets, or you can do a mix of the two. So you can customize your cargo helicopter to actually have some serious weapons on it if you wanted to if you want to kind of like double up I guess on the use of your aircraft all right finally we made it to the air tab and we have the IL 74 MD uh, this has two 23 mil guns on it I have no idea where these are on this aircraft. Are they at the back somewhere? Anyway, this is primarily a cargo aircraft that can airdrop. I think this is the aircraft that we see airdrop in the trailer. It has 128 seats and can carry 48,000 supply. But yeah, I'm going to assume that it can also carry vehicles and drop them off as well does have ECM available, so 20 ECM, so I assume that's the amount of like flares and stuff it can drop. Then we have the MiG-31 BM. So we're into the, yeah, into the hangar now and having a look at all of the different variants of missiles and whatnot we can put on these aircraft. This is looking very nice, the MiG-31. It comes by default with two of these R73s and two R37s. The R73s are like heat seekers by the looks of things, with 3,750 meter range. And then you've got like your Semect radar missiles or just classic radar missiles with 12,000 meter range. That is a long way. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have some pretty long range air engagements apparently. Uh, in terms of speed, it says 750. I love the way it has a backward speed if you hover over it, <laughs> as if this thing's going backwards. Um, and then we've got agility turn rate right there as well. I don't know if this is supposed to be like kilometers per hour. 750 seems pretty slow. I think it's just like relative speed. Anyway, first of all, or, or next up, we have the... Sorry, let me go through the, the pylons here. So we can put extra R73s on this, on the outer pylons. We can put R27s. These are sort of mid-range. So I think these are semact radar. These are radar missiles. These are like semact radar. And then you've got like infrared missiles. Um, this one's sort of a mid-range, 250 to 6,000 meter range on that. And then there's the ability to have an R77 which is a 9000 meter range missile interesting okay and the middle pylons 
I assume it's pretty similar. R27s, R77s, R37s, which are the really long range ones. The KH-59 Mark IIs, I believe these are yeah, air-to-ground cruise missiles that have 60,000 meter range. Okay. Then we have the KAB-500, which is the 500 kilogram bombs. You can put 100 and, oh sorry, 1,500 kilogram bombs. Interesting that these have an effective range of 10,500 meters. Maybe if you drop them like high enough, they can go quite far. Yeah, that is a lot of nice damage there. That's 28 damage. This one does 34 damage. And then we've got P, uh, sorry, RBK 500s, which are bombs. I, I mean, it says 500 millimeter heat bombs. Are RBKs... Sorry, does it say RBK or PBK? It says PBK there. It says RBK there. Um, I'm not sure which either which one it's supposed to be, but they kind of look like cluster bombs, as opposed to like generic bombs. Not sure. Anyway, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. <laughs> but I'm just showing you guys what there is under the fuselage. We can also choose what we put here. So by default, we get the R37s. We can have four R37s. Oh, it puts two more behind. Okay. Then there's the KAB500, which is a 500 kilogram bomb. And then there's the 1,500 kilogram bomb. And then we also have the PBKs. Okay. And you can mix and match all of those if you want. <laughs> That's a lot. It's a lot of uh, choice there, but you make those aircraft very, very expensive if you're not too careful. Now we have the SU-22, oh sorry, 24M2. This by default has two R-60 air-to-air -air missiles. It has a bunch of 100 kilogram bombs. So it looks like one set of four bombs and then two sets of five bombs at the back. So you got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I really like how close you can get to these models to have the look at this. But yeah, there you go. And uh, at the front here is like one, two, three, four. Is there four there? Right. Well. Um. Anyway, we are. What are we currently looking at here? Outer pylons. We can put four R6s on. We can have more of the 100 kilogram bombs if we want to make a proper carpet bomber. We can add 250 kilogram bombs. We can add. 250 kilogram bombs. These are SHL bombs. So I think those are cluster. Not entirely sure. And then you got the RBK bombs. I don't know. Some these look actually more like cluster, and then these look like maybe th napalm bombs. And then we got. 500, uh, 500 bombs, 500, uh, uh, sorry, 500 kilogram bombs, all the different types. We got the ODAB bomb as well. Like all of these do different things, but it doesn't say exactly what they do. But yeah, the RBKs are definitely cluster. And then the FAB, maybe that is napalm. Although it says 
penetration is 500. I mean, it says the same for the RBK, though. It's hard to say. There's also the ZB500, which is another bomb. That looks like napalm, actually. <laughs> it's just hard to say. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a massive uh, nerd when it comes to, like, knowing what bombs are what. And anyway, by default, the SU-24 comes with fuel pods, which increases its fuel from 180 to 300. You can get another 12 100 kilogram bombs. You can get 250 kilogram bombs. You got all the different bombs again in different variants and uh, different amounts. But although it looks like on the inner pylons, you can generally get more. And on the fuselage, we have the 100 kilogram bombs, the 250 kilogram bombs, uh, the 500 kilogram bombs, and a 1,500 kilogram bomb. So lots of different bombs. I think I said bomb a lot then. Uh, moving on, we have the SU-24 MP. So I'm trying to work out what the default difference is here between the two. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but these can have the R60 air-to-air -air missiles again. You can get four R60s. They can get KH MLs, which are air-to-ground laser-guided missiles. You've got rockets available. These are 80 mil rockets. You can also get S13 rockets and S25 rockets. So I guess it's like the close air support variant of the SU-20. These are 340 mil rockets. You get two of them. <laughs> they are big rockets. Uh, let's have a look at inner pylons. So you can put KH 31 missiles on them. God, those missiles look beastly. Uh, there's also another is this KH-25 laser guided we've got SH rockets, S-13 rockets and S-25 rockets there we go, that's that's the correct setup right there we get a KH-31 and then we just do four S-25s <laughs> okay, right well, there you go. That's the SU-24 MP. Now we have the SU-25 SM. I can imagine this has a ton of different loadouts. Uh, so let's go through them. So we've got wingtip. We can put the R60s on the wingtips with the R6, four R60s there. There's the R73, which has slightly better range, I think than the standard R60. And then there's ECM pods as well. Wonder what they do. Does that just give us more flares? Maybe it just gives us more flares or an ability to negate some radar AA or something. That'd be pretty cool. My right, outer pylons, we've got air-to-air -air R73s. S8 80 mil rockets, S130 mil rockets, S25 rockets, which are the 340 mil rockets. We've got the OFAB 100 bombs. Uh, there is the 500 kilogram napalm, I assume that is, um, the 500 mil uh, standard bomb, and then the 500 mil cluster. I think that's what they are. Um, then we've got middle pylons. We can have laser-guided missiles, rockets, S so we've got 80 mil rockets, S13 rockets, there's the S25 130 mil rockets, or sorry, 340 mil rockets, um, bombs, so again, 500 mil bombs, uh, I think those are the standard bombs, and we got standard 100 mil bombs, the RBK cluster bomb, and the ZB500 um, napalm bomb, I would assume. And then on the inner pylons, we can have KH 29 MLs, which are giant air to ground missiles. 
laser guided once again. The KH-58USHK, which is another air-to-ground missile, but doesn't require laser guidance. There's the 80mm rockets, the 130mm rockets, the 340mm rockets, the 100mm bombs, the 500mm napalm bomb, the normal bomb, and the cluster bomb. And yeah, there you go. You can set this up with a huge bomb payload. <laughs> we managed to get through them all. There we go. Very nice. Okay, moving on. We have the SU-30SM. These aircraft are actually very, very nice. I do like the look of them. All right, so outer pylons. We can have R-73 air-to-air. -air. We can have... ECM pods. We can have more R73. And then we can have ECM pods and two R73s. Okay. Middle pylons. We've got the R73 ET, R73 ER. What's the difference here? I have no idea. But two different types of R7 or R27s. Uh, then we have the R77, which is like semac radar. Uh, we got the KH27ML, which is the air-to-ground laser guided. And then we've also got the KH31 air-to-ground. So I don't know if this is, is this supposed to be like TV guided, actually. I know like one type of these missiles is, is um is TV guided, but I think that's I think it's laser guided by the looks of the icon there. Anyway, um inner pylons we can get more of these R twenty sevens, R seventy sevens, uh KH twenty nines, KH thirty ones. You can also bring one thousand five hundred kilogram bombs. And then for the fuselage, we can add even more missiles, some R-73s. We've got R-77s. I don't know why I said R-73s, R-27s. Um, we can put 1,500 kilogram bomb on there. We can put two KH-29MLs, or we can put two KH-31Ps. There you go. So again, can be really, really tricked out with missiles. That was the SU-30SM. Now we have the SU-34. This thing can actually have quite a big payload, if I remember correctly. So again, option for ECM on the outer pylons. We've got R-73s available, R-73s with ECM pods, or we can get two R-77-1s and two R-73s. Uh, the middle pylons, we can add R-77s, 500 kilogram bombs. Uh, so that's four normal 500 kilogram bombs. I would say four napalm bombs, four cluster bombs, 500 kilogram. I don't know what the ODAB does. Like, I don't know what kind of bomb that is. Uh, then there's the 250 mil bombs. We've got the KH-38ML laser-guided bomb. There's the KH-31, uh, sorry, not laser-guided bomb, laser-guided missile. Uh, KH-31, which is not laser-guided. And then the 500 kilogram bombs again. Okay, so that's just the outer pylons. And then the inner pylons, we've got R-77s, 500 kilogram bombs, all the different types of those. The 250 kilogram bomb, you've got KH-38s again, KH-31s, like again, just lots of the same, just more. <laughs> um, then on the inner pylons, we've got, again, 500 kilogram bombs, all of the different variants, 250 kilogram bombs, uh, more KH-38s or KH-31s. Um, we've got 500 kilogram bomb, we've got 1,500 kilogram, bomb, kilogram bombs, two of those. There's also two KH-59 Mark IIs. What are these? 
60,000 meter range cruise missiles. Very cool. So we can have cruise missiles on this thing. And under the fuselage, we're going to have even more 500 kilogram bombs. <laughs> 500 kilogram bomb, there's the another cruise missile. So you can technically have three cruise missiles on this thing. You can have both the KH-38 and the KH-31 missiles. Yeah, wow. This thing, I knew this thing could have a lot of payload, but that is, that is crazy. Uh, so what you could do is have your air to air on the wings and then your middle pylons just put like bombs and then your inner pylon just put bombs and then just or like let's do 1500 bomb and then the fuselage we just put bombs <laughs> there you go you got yourself a absolutely ripped bomber or you could just change them all to cruise missiles <laughs> you could set it up like uh that's going to make it 900 points. We do, uh, let's see, middle pylons, we do... Uh, can we not... So outer pylons is, is air-to-air -air only, and then can we not put any air-to-air -air on the middle pylons? Oh, it doesn't look like it. Because I was going to say, you just put like more air-to-air -air here, and then just have three cruise missiles. Like, that would be pretty nuts. Anyway, moving on, we have the SU-35S. Again, beautiful aircraft. Um, let's have a look. ECM pods, R73s, R77s. I'm just trying to look for anything new now. Most of this is the same. Um, inner pylons. We've got R27s and R77s. Okay, and then inner fuselage. We can have a fuel tank. We can have extra missiles, R-77s, R-37s, or six. So we can put six R-77s underneath. Crikey. That is a lot of missiles that that thing can carry. Wow. And R-77s, they're like the 9,000 meter range semax. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Then we have the Su-57, your new high-tech stealth fighter. I'm pretty sure the Russians only have like a few of these in service, like in real life i think they only have like six of them or something total um but anyway they're in the game and you got 30 mil cannon they get the r77 and the r73 and these are all in bays so you can see them kind of like underneath there you get r77s r37s which are the 12,000 meter range you can put kh38s and KH 58s in there. Okay. The KH 38s being the laser guided KH 58s, not laser guided. You got bombs you can put in there. You can carry a 1500 kilogram bomb, and you've also got, is that two cruise missiles? You can carry cruise missiles. And the rear bay, can that carry more cruise missiles? Huh. Interesting. But yeah, otherwise it's pretty much the same. So you could have an SU-57 just dropping four cruise missiles. <laughs> Alright. Moving on to the TU-160. This thing by default has 12 KH-101 cruise missiles that it can drop out from underneath. It is a huge aircraft. But it can have a very, very different amount of payloads. So we've got the KH-101 cruise missiles. There's a KH-555 cruise missiles. There's the 1,500 kilogram bombs. You can have 14 of those. You can have 44 500 kilogram bombs or 444 cluster bombs or one what's that 14 1500 kilogram bombs and then i don't know if the fab's the same as the cab but either way 
Um, 9,000 kilogram bombs. Two 9,000 kilogram bombs. Okay. So it's, uh, it's a big bomb. Moving on, we have the TU-22M3. Now for the wings, we can have bombs, 250 kilogram bombs of all types and KH-32 uh, what are these? Cruise missiles. We can put cruise missiles on the wings. Don't know where they are though. Like they're not working on the model. Fuselage. We can put bombs <laughs> and more bombs. And then in the bomb bay, we can put KH-32s with the cruise missiles. More 250 kilogram bombs, 500 kilogram bombs, 1,500 kilogram bombs, 3,000 kilogram bombs. Now, how many 3,000 kilogram bombs do we get? Two. And then 1,500 kilogram bombs. We get eight of those. Wow, you could really set this up crazy. So, if you have like. How many do we get? So, 22 250 kilogram bombs. Then we put 250 kilogram bombs here. Well, that gives us nine extra. And then we do even more 250 kilogram bombs on the wings. We've got four times nine plus the 22. That's like 28 plus 20. That's 50 bombs. <laughs> okay. We can have 50 250 kilogram bombs from that if we wanted to do like a big old carpet bomb run. That's going to completely break people's PCs. Then we have the TU95. Currently this has no uh, armaments or anything, but I'm going to assume that this is for a nuclear weapon or hydrogen bomb or something like that. I think these could also carry cruise missiles in real life, but yeah, there you go. That is your lot. Your very long look and all of the Russian units in the Broken Arrow demo, and that only took me an hour and a half. <laughs> we might also see this carrying a nuke or something in the future, because I believe there is a nuke on the uh, American side. But yeah, there you go. That is your lot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this look at all of the units on the Russian side in the Broken Arrow demo. And that was available as part of Steam Next Fest. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.